You know what the ironic thing is? That years, years ago, what was it, like 14 years ago, 13 years ago, when they did the brand extension, um, and they did the brand split, as some people like to refer to it as, people were saying, like, what a great thing it was. You know, they, they were saying that um, talent finally could get exposure on TV. You wouldn't have guys relegated to velocity and heat. Everybody said this. And then they realized that, you know, people were still being held back that, Really, what the brand split was doing really was, you know, um, just keeping guys off certain shows. And at the end of the day, it was really just not as good as of a concept as people had originally envisioned. But, you know, I like to think back of the fact that WWE had so much fucking talent that um that they even needed to consider a brand split. You know, they give guys a break so they didn't have to work two shows a week. Um, you know, and and you know, in theory, give guys more opportunities. But that wasn't the case and the brand split was a failure. In many ways it led to the company going downhill. But you know, I just like to think that at one time, WWE had so much talent, they didn't even know what to fucking do with it. And we're at another era in wrestling right now where it's, you know, where they don't even have enough people. But they're doing a concept that a lot of people would have killed for back in the day. And that's the third hour. But I guess WWE was smart enough that three hours is just fucking overkill. But I think back in... Back in the day, when I really minded the third hour, I mean, there was a lot of guys who I thought should have been on Raw and SmackDown, but didn't make it there every week. You know, and there was a lot of complaints about this. But there was guys that were getting left out. But even Triple H, I mean, a third hour of television is just hard to do. And this Raw, while it was, it might have not been the worst of Raws, I've seen far worse. It wasn't really the best either, and last week's show was way fucking better than this. They started off with Brian and Reigns arguing in the ring. Um, Triple H, Stephanie come out, the authority comes out. Um, th this whole segment, once again, was just... Kind of what Triple H was talking about in the podcast with Stone Cold about just being rehearsed. And he even admitted the the rehearsedness of the fucking, you know, intro promos. Not only do they go on for way too fucking long, but they're rehearsed as shit. And they're scared to mess with the formula. But the fucking thing is this. If the formula is broken, what the fuck are they scared of? How fucking worse could it possibly get? Yet they insist on doing these fucking mind-numbingly long promos that are just so cookie-cutter. They, you know, the funny thing is, they're there to also... There are, let me tell you something. Their writing skills and the writing staff are just fucking piss poor. Because a lot of times what they do is they just fucking do all these different little tangents and little fucking things in the fucking promo. It's hard to explain. You just have to fucking hear it for yourself. They confuse people. They don't give solid answers in their promos or solid visions. And, you know, you might not want that because it'd be too predictable. But sometimes it's necessary. Let us know what we're looking at for the future sometimes. See, this is what proves it. WWE doesn't know... When to surprise us, see, it isn't the internet. Surprises are possible even with the internet. It's the way they fucking book shit. Sometimes they're way too fucking obvious when they don't need to be. And then they, um, they're not as obvious as they sh I almost didn't get that right. They're not as obvious as they should be when it counts. So you see, they've got everything fucking ass backwards. 
this is the time around Mania season where they should be a little bit more obvious. Let us fucking know, you know, what's going on here. There's just so much shit where Roman Reigns is saying that he won the Rumble, but, you know, Brian's still involved, and really, you know, it kind of doesn't make sense, because, like they said, they don't really have the right to do that. But then again, I look back at, like, say, WrestleMania 2000, WrestleMania 16. You had a fatal four-way match. So they could really manipulate as much as they want, but, you know, they just... Need to fucking explain it a little bit better is all I'm saying. Shit just is like happening and not making a lot of sense along the way. So they make a match um, to start things off. It's Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns against uh, Kane in the big show. And I don't know why they always fucking insist on having this tag team every couple of years. Every couple of years it's Kane in the big show. Like, okay, I understand it's the two tallest guys that they have on the fucking roster. But for God fucking sakes, they were tag champions, then they got back together a couple of years after that, and it just fucking continues on, and fucking on, and on, and on, until they're dominating the fucking Royal Rumble. And they're having fucking marquee matches on Raw. These motherfuckers should be fucking retired already. Why are they, like, looking almost like main event wrestlers here? They're being given the spotlight. They're being touted once again. It's time to start phasing these guys out. They should be having retirement matches, farewell matches. You know, they shouldn't be having these fucking full-fledged matches and shit. It's not fucking right to, to everyone else, to the younger fucking talent. I mean, these are guys at the top, and these aren't even the guys with the egos. This isn't even fucking Triple H or somebody else, for that matter. We're, we're, we're fucking talking about just Big Show and Kane. I mean, just tell these guys, okay, you've been at the top long enough. It's trying, time to let somebody else have a fucking shot at it. I mean, for God fucking sakes. And, you know, this wasn't that bad of an opening match, but, you know, it ends to set up the match later on in the night. Daniel Bryan gets tossed into the timekeeper's area, and that calls for a disqualification. How many fucking times does that happen in a match, and it doesn't lead to a disqualification? And why do they have the same fucking spots, like, over and over again? I really have to say this. What the fuck is up with the timekeeper's area? Not that guys didn't brawl over there during the Attitude Era, or even, you know, prior to that, or even, you know, after that. Uh, but, like, they made this little booth in the PG era, um, and, and, like, every single fucking no DQ match or anything, a guy gets thrown into that area. Um, I guess because, it's like, it's a restricted area that you're not supposed to be in there. I mean, obviously, well, this was, like, the first time disqualification was called for when someone went in there. I mean, like, how is that a DQ just because you throw the guy in there? But anyway, you know... They're obsessed with throwing guys in there. I mean, like, holy shit. It's like a fucking fetish or something. Like, they almost, like, envision that fucking timekeepers there, that, like, open space is, like, a big, like, gaping vagina or something. They want to just throw people in there for laughs. You know, Vince McMahon's sense of humor is fucked up. So, I mean, maybe that's what he thinks of when he looks at that little fucking opening over there or some shit. And also, a lot of times, you know, guys getting thrown over the announce table. I mean, I don't, like, no, it's just, like, weird shit that they do in the PG era. Not saying that they don't put people through the table, but, like, I, I never remember that back in the day where people are just, like, getting thrown over the announce table. Like, I don't know. They want to see if the guy could clear. It's, like, some fucking Olympic sport or something. It's, like, called, like, announce table vaulting or some shit. I mean, maybe they should get, like, a stick or something and try to just vault over it properly, Olympic style. I, like... I don't, like, get these little spots that they do now. It's like they're unnecessary. They're not as cool as WWE might think that they are. And I feel like it's, like, to compensate because they can't do as hardcore shit as they used to, so they just fill in with more ridiculous spots. Um, th then you had um, Ryback defeating Rollins by disqualification, uh, you know, run-ins by the authority, 
Um, Ryback getting beat down. Um, this match, I could see it happening at Fastlane, probably. I mean, I think that's probably why they did the DQ here. Um, didn't really ha anything happen here. Just, you know, just interference lasted about a minute or two. Uh, then it was Paige defeating Brie Bella. Um, nothing too fantastic here. Nothing overly terrible. Um... You know, Paige, Nikki Bella, Fastlane is just... Nikki Bella is just a boring champion. You know, I think in the Divas division, we really have to sell this shit hard because it's so not over anymore. I, I mean, let, let, let's just fucking face it, folks. Um, with the toned-down sexuality of the fucking WWE, I, let's just come out and say it already. Um, no one gives a fucking shit anymore. I mean, the YWC here, you know, people are fucking crazy over Paige, crazy over AJ, um, you know, and, and, and they're talented, don't get me wrong, but, you know, they don't have the same level, they're missing something, watching Paige in NXT, she was so much better, here she's, well, she's just, she's boring, really, she's not a, a bad wrestler, but, you know, there's, like, some type of, like, uh, factor that's missing from her that she hasn't carried over properly from, from NXT. Um, and, and the thing is, you know, it's really necessary to have somebody like AJ who's good on the mic. Because they said with the Divas division, it is fucking, um, like, impossible to sell this shit is important. So you need almost every single backbone you can. When someone like AJ is good on the mic... Um, even though I'm not fucking crazy about AJ, I, I gotta admit, at least she's good on the mic, she could, you know, sell this shit more than it's being sold at the moment, you know, to the fans that they should care when really they're not really even given any real reason to care, um, you know, the, the match is there for like two minutes, um, the story is poor, the build-up is poor, there's no fucking real good wrestling, really, to speak of, um, you got, then you got Rusev and Cena, Rusev gives a little tribute to Cena, then Cena comes out, and they're trying to sell Cena as an old man, which makes me go to Wikipedia, and really look up how old he is, 37, 37, folks. To sell Cena as an old man is fucking ridiculous. It really fucking is. You know, am I sick of seeing Cena? Do I like Cena? No, I don't. Um, now, you gotta admit, like, as of late, they have been toning down the Cena shit. They really have. I mean, it is quite obvious that, you know, maybe they are taking a hint of sorts. I mean, we'll watch in a couple of months. He'll be winning his 16th fucking championship. But for right now, I'm sensing a lull in Cena's career. I mean, they're not really showing him as much. I mean, 10 minutes of Cena really tonight on Raw. Um, he brawled with Rusev for a little bit. Selling him as an old man, though, is fucking ridiculous. 37 is not old. Even in wrestling... Look at Big Show and Kane. Uh, those are your glaring examples right there of how WWE doesn't view that old or time to retire. But anyway, I'm not saying like Cena's gone for good, but it seems like they're taking a little bit of a break from Cena. They're not really as going as hard for Cena this time of year leading into Mania season, which I got to say, I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, they were going, well... I don't think they were starting the fucking uh, way, uh, Bray Wyatt shit with Cena yet. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, it was okay, little brawl and everything. Um, then you had Bray Wyatt defeating Dolph Ziggler. Another decent match. Not as good as last week, but I guess it was decent enough. Um, Wyatt later on the night would lay out the challenge to the Undertaker, being really mysterious about it. Um, you know, the thing is with this match, I, I kind of saw that. WWE knows that Ziggler is like a fucking competitor. 
They know he could put on a good match. That's why they're giving this match time and all that. But um, leading into Mania, especially now that it's pretty much set in stone that Brian will be a part of the main event, and Ziggler and Brian is not happening. Um, this match uh, that they were going to have would have been great for Ziggler. It would have been bad for Brian, but great for Ziggler. But Ziggler at Mania, I mean, I, I know he'll be on the card, but he's probably going to be in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal or some shit like that. I, I don't know. i kind of confused about where he's going to be. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in the predictions video, like after Fastlane or something. Like, you know, um, and that's also, the other thing. Also at Fastlane, what the fuck is... Ziggler going to be doing? Is he going to be wrestling Bray Wyatt? I mean, like, this pay-per-view is not that far away. We should kind of fucking know what the matches are going to be, and we're not really finding that out, and you know, um, that's why I think, like, Fastlane is going to be like a one-match show. It's all about Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. not saying there won't be other good matches, but they're not really focusing on any of them. How about building, a, you know, a, a nice card there leading into me to get people excited? Um, this build-up's fucking trash, you know? We should be knowing what type of matches, guys, the status of Bray Wyatt should be in. But we don't. It's a problem. Then we got uh, Paul Heyman and, and Lesnar. Lesnar comes there, um, you know... Lesnar wasn't advertised. This was like the first time that he was there that he wasn't fucking advertised. Um, his promo was okay. There wasn't anything that wrong about it. But then again, it wasn't anything really that exciting. Kind of like the fucking episode itself. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. But it was just, you know, there. And it almost felt unnecessary. Uh, Heyman said things like, you know, take one look at Brian and take one look at Lesnar. People are going to say that that's burying him, but I didn't really have a problem with that. Um, you know, giving Brian the underdog thing. I mean, we, we got the face of his Brian fans. Brian, as a wrestler, is short. Um, you know, he's not as heavy as a lot of other guys. Um, you know, so saying things like this are okay in my book. You know, as long as they're not saying... Brian is a lousy wrestler, and Brian, you know, doesn't deserve to be there and, and keep hammering that home. That I have a problem with. But if they want to say that, you know, Lesnar's more physically imposing than Brian, that's okay. Um, then you have uh, the New Day defeating Goldust and Stardust. This was, like, fucking retarded, this match. Um, neither team has, like, any fucking popularity, heat, or anything on them. The New Day, the only thing that these guys have fucking managed to accomplish is getting a couple of people in the audience to chant New Day along with them. But it's not really that many people, and it's really an unimpressive team. Basically, the team is pretty fucking pathetic. All it is is just a bunch of fucking has-beens or, you know, never-will-bees or, you know... That's all it is. Guys like Kofi parading around in these fucking outfits. It just looks fucking sad, alright? Fucking sad. Um, go, uh, Stardust walks out in the match. Um, and you got the New Day picking up the fucking win here. Um, fucking lousy as fucking shit. The New Day gimmick is probably the most ridiculous fucking thing I've ever seen, and probably the least over angle on our gimmick I've ever seen in my life. Um, then you had Triple H and Sting. Um, this was a pretty decent segment. Uh, people are complaining about the uh, the indie wrestler that they had wearing the Sting mask when Triple H uh, turned around. Um, I don't really have that big of a problem with that. Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, it wasn't really meant to be Sting, so, like, okay. I think they handled this segment fairly well. Um, it would have been nice if, like, Sting was in the rafters at one point. When they were pointing the spotlight up, I kind of thought they were pointing at the rafters. And so, uh, but that was not to be. that. But, you know, if they just showed Sting in the rafters... 
That would have been 10 times better than this segment, which just really ultimately was a video of Sting saying he accepted. But, I mean, they made it a bit spooky, um, which was good. But, like I said, I think they could have handled it better by actually fucking having him there. That would have been nice. But, no, uh, instead they do it their way. Um, but it would have been way better, way more nostalgic to have Sting up in the fucking rafters. Um, then you have Cesaro and Tyson Kidd defeating the Usos. I'm looking forward to this match at the pay-per-view. I know they won't win the fucking tag titles, but still, I, I, I just... I like having Cesaro on pay-per-view. Um, the guy's a really good fucking wrestler, and, you know, I'm just, I'm happy to see him on fucking TV at all. That, that's just a guy that deserves to be there, a guy that's just fucking talented as all fucking hell. Um, the ending to this match was pretty lame. Cesaro just pushing one of the Usos off the top rope, and Kid gets the pin. Um... That was about as lame as a disqualification where a guy gets tossed into the timekeepers. I mean, like, guy is getting thrown off the top rope. That's a transitional move. No finisher, no nothing, no feet on the ropes. No, just a basic pin right after. Um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to that match. Uh, I think it will be good. Then you got um, Sin Cara defeating Miz Dow. At ringside, you had Miz sitting in his chair. He was t telling Miz Dow what to do to get him waters and stuff. Um, and, you know, it was enough of a distraction for Sin Cara to get the win. They're trying to do some thing here where Sin Cara is picking up victories, like fluke victories. And, you know, and, and, and like, I think back, like, when Sin Cara first came in, they were sort of making a big deal out of him, and now he's, like, not even the same guy. It's really interesting to look at that. I mean, um, this he's barely even on fucking Raw half the time. He's on main event and superstars, pretty much just really a job for really. Um, like I said, it's not even the real guy. Um, then you got Ambrose defeating Curtis Axel. Um, they're still going with this little fucking gimmick that Curtis Axel was never eliminated from the Rumble. Um, I think that's probably the last time they're going to do it. Ambrose just squashes him, um, gets on the mic and said that, you know, he's going to be IC champ. Uh, Bad News Barrett gets on the Titan Tron and, you know, I'm happy to see he's back to the Bad News stuff. They're doing BNZ. Um, to copy TMZ. I mean, I'm happy now they're getting back to the bad news shit fucking finally. I mean, that should have been there right from the beginning. And, and here's also the other thing. Where the fuck has Barry been? He hasn't even been on Raw. Like, where, you know, like, why is he not wrestling? It's like he's got the IC belt and he's holding it hostage. Where the fuck is it? I mean, like, the guy just got back from injury. Um, he's recovered enough. It's time to fucking wrestle. Where the fuck is he? That, that, that's what I want to know. Where the fuck is Wade Barrett? Where's Bad News Barrett? Um, he's on the Titan Tron, and that's it. All right? That's a little bit fucking strange. Like, he's not around. Then in the main event, it was Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan defeating Kane, Big Show, j, j Security, and Seth Rollins. Decent match. Not a bad little main event. Um, you had a brawl. Ryback, Ziggler. Ziggler jumps off the stage. Everybody comes in to interfere. Um, and at the end of the... At the end of the match, Daniel Bryan's about to hit the running knee. Um, Reigns tags in, hits the spear, and gets the win. Everybody's booing like crazy. I like that finish. I have to say that right now. That That's probably one of the best finishes they booked in a while. Why? Because it got Reigns heat. At this point in the game, they have no fucking choice but to turn Roman Reigns heel. Why? Because he's... Everybody fucking hates him. That's why. Except for a couple of numbskulls here in the YWC. Uh, but most people fucking hate Reigns. They don't think he deserves to be there. And he fucking doesn't. 
So with that said, turning him heel is a good fucking idea. And um, and the way how he tagged in and everything, that was that was good. I enjoyed seeing that. Um, I, I thought that, that that went over very, very fucking well. Um, if only they could do more shit like that. Like, there they really seem to understand that that action would lead to a reaction. A reaction that they intended. If they kept that concept in mind most of the fucking time, we wouldn't have half the fucking problems we do in WWE. This was not a terrible fucking show. Not at all. A couple of decent things. But really, there was way, way, way too much fucking useless or boring shit. And just the overall tone of the night wasn't as exciting as it should have been. Um, the, the intro segment, the fucking opening promo was just, like, fucking tearing me apart from the fucking inside. It was boring. Um, you know, it, it, it didn't feel as special as it should have. Um, there's, there's a lot of work to be done here. We've got Brian headed for the main event at WrestleMania. But they gotta work on fucking booking this shit. Making it better. Holy fuck, there's way too much shit on here. And if there were ever a night where you could definitely see what Triple H was talking in that podcast of the third hour of television, it's hard to write for. Well, there you fucking go, motherfuckers. There is a fucking glaring example right there. Alright, so, yeah, not horrible, but wow, they need to try harder. Way harder than this. Alright.